Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to paint flesh tones. <music> Amongst model builders, the subject of painting flesh tones can be kind of scary. With flesh tones, there really are a lot of options and a lot of variations. In this video, I'm going to cover how to paint Caucasian flesh tones, but in upcoming videos, we'll look at other types of flesh tones, such as those for African Americans. When painting flesh tones, it's important to understand that you can really add a lot of depth of color, or you can do them to an acceptable level to get the model on the table quickly. For this reason, I have fundamentally three different ways of painting flesh tones. I have a very fast and easy version that looks good on rank and file troops. Then I have a more moderate version for more important troops on the table, models that will draw a little more interest, or just simply if I have the time to spend on the model itself. And then lastly, I have a more advanced and involved method that I use, and I reserve this for character models or show pieces. Now, I do have one caveat to add, and that is that I'm talking specifically about 15 millimeter models. And at this scale, quality can vary widely from one manufacturer to the next. And some manufacturers have different interpretations of what type of scale is appropriate. Some are heroic, with the features being exaggerated, and some are kind of minimalist in order to try to keep the proportionality realistic. So, whichever style you use, it's ultimately going to limit how effective your final product is. The other thing I'd like to add is that if you've been watching my videos, you know that I'm primarily a terrain guy and a tank painter. So when it comes to painting infantry models, I still probably don't turn out competition grade faces, but I think like to think that I produce models that are at least passable for display or to go into a diorama. So with that handled, let's get down to it and I'll show you my techniques. When you're painting Caucasian skin tones for rank and file troops or large masses of infantry, you generally want to get through it quickly, and this is how I do it if I want to just get a model on the table. After undercoating the model and painting it up to the point where I'm ready to tackle the flesh, I then just go ahead and take out some Vallejo flat flesh and paint it over the face and hands. After that's done, I get out some flat, uh, flesh wash, which is a product by Army Painter and paint it over top of the flat flesh. This brings back some of the depth to the colors and gives it more of a nuanced sort of series of tones. Finally, when the Army Painter flesh wash is dried, then I take out a really fine brush, take out some Vallejo light flesh paint, water it down a fair amount, and just go in and paint in a true highlight. That is, using the point of my brush to touch any of the raised surfaces on the model where the light would be reflecting. This would generally be the forehead if it's exposed, the cheeks, the nose, and sometimes the chin. With that done, the model's pretty much ready to go, and I move on to whatever is required to finish it up. This brings me to the intermediate method. This version takes just a little longer and is a little more involved, but it turns out a proportionally better product. In order to do this, I start usually with a deep red color, and my preferred color is Vallejo's Hall Red. I paint it over the flesh of the model, including both the faces and the hands. Once this is dry, I then get out some light flesh paint, go in and with a fine brush, pick out the details, and try to be fairly thorough. I go after the raised portions, the cheeks, the sides of the cheeks, the foreheads, etc. When this is done, I go back to my flesh wash again. I apply that over the whole model and let it settle in and dry. 
Again, this just brings back the richer flesh tones. When this is dry, then I get out the light flesh again, water it down slightly so it flows fairly well, and go in and paint a true highlight, just like I did before in the easier version. I focus again on the only the most raised portions of the face and the hands, such as the cheeks, the nose, the knuckles of the hands, and a thing that would be exposed to more direct light than other parts of the body that might be in shadow. This brings us to the advanced method. And really, it's nothing special, it's just more specifics for using the same techniques. You just use them in a more detailed and concentrated kind of way, with more steps. Like the intermediate method, you start with Hall Red. After you've applied it to the flesh, then rather skipping to flat flesh or light flesh, you take the flat flesh and you mix it 50-50 with the Hall Red. You go in and paint everywhere that's not the deepest, most recessed areas, like the eye sockets, maybe immediately under the nose, or around the edges of the headwear that the model might be wearing. When this is done, you move on to flat flesh, apply it normally, again focusing on more of a raised area, leaving more of a border from the previous mid-tone. Then you move on to light flesh, concentrating only the most raised areas. When all this layering has dried, then, you guessed it, I go back and add some flesh wash. When the flesh wash is finished up, then now it's a good time to get out light flesh again and apply a re-highlight. Or, alternatively, I might put just a little white into the light flesh and go after only the most raised areas. That would be tip of the nose, edges of the cheeks, maybe the orbits above the eyes, depending on whether or not it's covered by the headwear, the chin, and the knuckles. Often it's a good idea to go after the index finger since it's usually oriented at the top of the model. And then with that finished, the model is complete. Obviously the more advanced version takes proportionally more time, but the results look great on models that you really want to stand out, and I find they're particularly suitable for crews on vehicles that you want to use as showpieces. And there you have it, my three methods for painting Caucasian skin tones. Now, obviously this isn't the only way, it's only one way, and you may have your own ideas for how to do skin tones. If you have some suggestions, how about you put them in the comments below. I hope you found this episode interesting, and I hope it helps you develop your model building and painting skills. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your resource for regular model painting, and miniature building content. We release our videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays every week. If you're new to our channel, please remember to subscribe. We'd love to have you on board and press the bell button so you get immediate notifications and you don't miss out. That's it for this episode. See you next time. And until then, remember to keep building life in miniature.